Welcome everybody to this presentation about measuring asset composability with me and my colleagues from the University of Copenhagen. So in this presentation, we are looking at measuring the composability of DeFi applications as an approximation for financial integration and contagion in the Ethereum single market. The Ethereum blockchain is a curious place because it is a transparent and stateful execution environment for financial applications. And DeFi applications quite successfully employ these properties in order to offer their users a high degree of interoperability between applications. So lending markets such as Compound and automated market makers such as Uniswap compute the allocation of assets to their liquidity pools by issuing liquidity shares, which grants proportional ownership of a liquidity pool to the holder of the liquidity share. And liquidity shares actually uh, represent a fairly complex payout function uh, on the underlying assets, which is more akin to that of an options contract. Where it gets really interesting is when liquidity providers are collateralizing liquidity shares from other applications, creating what could be akin to secondary markets for liquidity shares. Here, uh, liquidity providers then wind up holding a derivative on a derivative, uh, which they do in order to maximize yield. So in order to approach this issue, we defined the research question, can we measure asset composability as a proxy for financial integration on the Ethereum blockchain? The core idea of the paper is to measure the composability of assets as the distance between the initial token to the composed version as a sum of all wrapping operations. To calculate the distance, one must find all composed assets of the initial token. Therefore, we propose and apply an algorithm to find the derivatives of the initial asset. In this presentation, we apply the method on USDC. We find wrapped versions of USDC and calculate the specific distance. Our data has been gathered considering all 345 million transactions on Ethereum. In 2020. In order to find derivatives of the initial asset, we take 10,000 random USDC transactions. Within this data set, we identify all ERC20 tokens which have been sent. We classify if the ERC20 tokens are wrapped versions of the initial asset. And after this first iteration, the identified composed versions of USDC have a distance of one. Each identified derivative is now the base for a second iteration of 10,000 new transactions trying to find derivatives of USDC with a distance of two. This process is iterate to find even higher nested assets. We stop only if an identify asset has a non-significant number of transactions. For all found composed assets, we therefore calculate the distance from the wrapped version to the initial token as sum of all wrapping operations. And finally, we assert that for each composed asset, we have calculated the shortest distance. Applying this algorithm results in an asset tree where the initial token is the root. And for 2020, we found 35 assets of distance one, 12 assets of distance two, four assets of distance three, and one asset of distance four, for USDC. The full tree and all found ERC20 derivatives can be seen in the written proceedings. Now let's take a look on the results. First, to put it into perspective, the traffic generally increases on Ethereum in 2020, partially due to an increase in gas limit on the 20th of June. But um, the number of ERC20 transactions are increasing not only in an absolute sense, which you can see on the left side, 
but also in relation to all transactions, which you can see on the right side. As a subset of ERC-20 transactions, the same development can be observed for USDC. So after putting things in perspective with all transactions on Ethereum, um, we will now take a look on USDC and derivatives of USDC. So within USDC, we observe a clear tendency to include more composed assets over time. In the left side, one can see the absolute number of transactions of USDC, as well as the absolute number of transactions with composed versions with a distance of one, with a distance of two, and so on. On the right side, even the relative number of transactions with composed or wrapped versions of USDC is increasing over time. In this case, we see that the increased usage of wrapped assets might have been kickstarted by a phase which we call a DeFi summer. We can see that during the peak in week 33, there have been three times more wrapped assets transactions than plain USDC transactions. Interestingly, the number of transactions with highly nested token, like distances of three and four, seems to be steady since the DeFi summer. So in this paper, we have sought to quantify the composability of assets on Ethereum by computing the number of derivatives within a sample of transaction data. We believe that uh, these results could contribute towards uh, an early indicator for the degree of financial integration on the Ethereum network. And now quantifying uh, the degree of financial integration on the Ethereum network can facilitate a better understanding of how shocks can travel through these tightly interconnected networks of DeFi applications. And this may help us in improving the overall resilience of the network and protecting uh, investors against systemic risk.